It's no secret that iPadOS 18 is nothing like we expected it to be, especially in the light of the new M4 iPad hardware that we got. But on the bright side, it's kind of packed with some new features and maybe some improvements. So let's check them out. But before we begin, we first have to know which iPads are even compatible with the brand new iPadOS 18. So, anything from iPad Pro 3rd Gen up to date, meaning any iPad from 2018 will be getting all the new updates. Now that that's out of the way, let's kick things off with the iPadOS exclusive updates. In the Notes app, we now have Smart Script, a feature when enabled intelligently cleans up your handwriting and even auto adjusts when you delete something in sentence, making not taking just a bit more fun. We also have live audio transcription which lets you record and transcribe audio in real time, ideal for capturing lectures or brainstorming sessions on the fly. It's only available for iPads with English US set as the default language though. The calculator app is now available on iPads with a fancy feature called Math Notes where whenever you write a math problem with your Apple Pencil and write an equal sign, it automatically solves it and throws up the answer. And it can even draw some basic graphs like the parabola. Just wish we had this feature way back when I was in school. Anyways, I don't really use the calculator app like at all, but it's a welcome update. Moving on to the files app, we finally got the option to format an SSD in different formats, which is a very welcome experience, but we still don't have a Mac level of organization. More about this in a minute. The settings app got a little redesigned to look a bit more like the latest macOS settings and when you scroll all the way down, we no longer have a large list of all apps. It's now neatly tucked in the apps folder, the very bottom. We also have redesigned tab bars on all first party apps like the App Store, Home App, Apple TV and so on. Moving on to features on iPad borrowed from iOS 18, we have all customization options for the home screen. So now you can freely rearrange app icons and widgets wherever you want as you're no longer bound by Apple's home screen layout. We also have the option to add new looks to app icons by changing their color or mode or style how they are displayed on the home screen. The addition of locked and hidden apps is another welcome change. This feature, while not new to Android users, provides added security by requiring a passcode, face ID or touch ID to access specific apps. Also, apps can be hidden in a discrete folder within the app drawer. That way, it's almost as if the app doesn't exist on your device as it doesn't even show up in the taskbar. But uh, if someone knows your passcode, they can always access the hidden apps. So I guess if you look at this in a different light, it's just a gimmick. Apart from the home screen, another iOS feature on iPad is the control center with multiple or continuous swipe down windows for different controls that I don't really use, but you can customize it to your liking by holding down for a second or pressing the plus button allowing you to resize or even add new controls from a large updated list. Also, we get a kill switch to immediately jump the power of window and instead of holding down the controls to access extra options, you just tap on them for access. But still, you need at least three taps to fully close the control center, which I do mind. The gallery or photos app is also updated adding a hell lot of playlists and libraries on the sidebar in case we didn't 
have enough before. <laughs> I absolutely love the updated viewing options as you can either view photos or videos in this dope rectangular form with other photos or videos lined up below for easy scroll or you can view it in full screen. Also when you enable audio on one video, it automatically plays videos with their audio even after closing the first video. We also have new ways to play with messages like scheduling and Apple intelligence promises even more features. We have a game mode which Apple claims reduces audio latency to the AirPods for a richer gaming experience and minimizes background activities to sustain a consistent high frame rate. We have a few updates to Safari but I prefer Chrome so I won't go into that. We have a new passwords app that securely syncs your saved passwords across your devices. We also get SharePlay allowing you to share your screen and allow remote control access to your iPad via FaceTime but I haven't given that as shorts and many other tiny improvements. Apple intelligence is now available on the public beta in all other countries except for China and the EU. And most unfortunately I'm in the EU so I'll have to wait till we get access to that for a quick walkthrough. All these features truly make the iPad a powerhouse for creatives and academic endeavors but reflecting on what's still missing there are areas that still need improvements. For instance, the Files app. Despite its functionality, it still feels sluggish, especially when handling larger files or syncing with iCloud and we still don't have the option to set a default app to open specific files. Enhancements in multitasking and stage manager will be beneficial as managing multiple apps simultaneously can still be cumbersome. Also an addition of multiple app sound support like the Mac would be a welcome update. While the hardware on iPads like the iPad Pro is undoubtedly impressive, software optimization sometimes falls short. Even with advancements like the M4 chip, the iPad is still just an iPad as it basically does the exact same thing that the iPad 10th or 9th gen powered by an A14 Bionic chip <laughs> does. You even have access to all the exact same apps as the Pro models have except for the stage manager thing but it still does literally the exact same thing. So having a Pro iPad powered by the M4 chip brings no unique advantages over the lesser iPads. Some like myself use the iPad as the primary and only machine but for most people the iPad is still just an iPad, a device for basic productivity, gaming and mostly content consumption. Stay tuned for my upcoming 2024 iPad buying guide where I'll dive deeper into the latest models and help you find the perfect iPad for your needs. Remember, if you have any thoughts or questions about iPads and iPadOS 18, drop them in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear from you. Stay tight.